Warp is an agentic development environment that is possibly the most innovative tool available. And it has quickly become one of my favorite AI coding tools. Let me show you exactly why. Hey folks, my name is Utsav. If you're new here, I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, and I've spent the past two decades building everything from startups to large scale systems. On this channel, I share tools and strategies that help you level up across your technical skills, engineering efficiency, and your mindset. So if that sounds interesting, subscribe to the channel and follow me in various social media platforms. So we are at a point in software engineering where 80 to 90% of our code is autonomously written with the help of AI. However, with most IDEs, the code editor still occupies around 80% of your screen. But for most agentic workflows, which is how I write most of my code these days, having a code editor front and center doesn't make much sense. I either have to cram my terminal and the AI chat window into a limited screen real estate, juggling space, panels, and tabs, or I consistently have to switch between my development tools terminal, editor, chat window, Docker, browser, so on and so forth. This is where Warp has drastically streamlined my coding workflow by eliminating all that back and forth, smartly integrating everything into one familiar space. For the sake of transparency, this video is sponsored by Warp, but I've been an avid user of Warp for almost two years now, and their newest features are a game changer. So when they reached out to collaborate, I was ecstatic. Think of Warp as a combination of cloud code and cursor, but with cleaner UX, better editing capabilities, and support for working across multiple code bases with multiple agents all at once. Let me make this clear. Warp isn't a replacement for your IDE. There's still a time and place for writing code manually. So a traditional IDE layout still makes sense in the proper context. Where Warp shines is when you're thinking, planning, prompting, debugging, iterating, and collaborating with AI. Let me first quickly show you how it works then I'll use it to add a feature to a complex production project that I'm currently working on. Start by downloading Warp from warp.dev. It's a standalone tool, not a plugin for your existing ID. It's also completely free to use, but they do offer paid plans for those who require more AI requests or wish to utilize it for their business purposes. Let's begin with a simple example. Okay, first let's create a folder for the project and give it a simple prompt to create a Python script to accept English text and use the OpenAI API to translate it to Spanish. So here it's given me a plan of action that looks good to me, so I'll let it continue. And looks like it's done. Okay, so let me quickly review the script. Um, it looks good to me, so I'll go ahead and add the OpenAI API key and give it a spin. And it's translated the text to English, so that's perfect. You can select your AI model at any time by clicking the agent button and selecting one from the available list or just set it at auto. And you can also switch between agent mode and terminal mode by cycling between escape and backspace keys. You can also modify some key settings for the AI agent and how much control it has from the settings. And this will affect how much input you have to give, for example, when making code edits or reading files, executing commands. So you have full control over whether it fully autonomously executes the commands or asks you for prompts. Okay, so that was a quick overview. Now let me show you something real world by making some pretty involved changes in my startup project that I'm currently working on. If you're curious, it's a project dedicated to helping software engineers prepare for job interviews. Unlike anything out there, it uses very advanced progression algorithms and science back learning techniques to make interview preparation more effective and efficient. So if you're prepping for interviews, consider joining the waitlist by visiting prepable.io. I'll leave the link in the description below. We are launching at the end of September. So this is my prepable dashboard here and on the user drop down I want to add a button that can request a new feature and to make this change I would need to update the storage layer add API endpoints to the back end then I would need to add the UX to the front end and hook it all up to the correct endpoints so let me instead use warp to do that okay so the app is divided into two projects the front end and the back end so I'm going to open each of them in a separate tab on warp here and to make that change, you would actually need to go into the database and create some storage implementations based on existing contracts and interfaces. And on the front end, hopefully it's going to figure out that it needs to change the user dropdown um, component and also add the API endpoints in the API client. All right, I'm going to start with the backend first and going to prompt it 
to create an API endpoint that enables users to request new features. It should accept a feature string and a detailed string, which serves as an explanation for the feature flag. Additionally, I also need a get endpoint that fetches the features that the user has requested, and it can feel free to create any types that it needs for that. Uh, it looks like it's reading my project to understand the structure and some existing implementations for storage. And it's also scanning the project to figure out what structure my current web API has. Looks like it's got enough context on my project to go ahead with the implementation. It's given me some requirements and asked for some clarifications. Same as usual, it's created a plan and it looks good to me. So I'm going to let it execute. Now, this is where the beauty of LARP comes in. While that's running, I'm going to go to the front end tab and give it the requirement to add a user drop down button that requests a feature. And when the user clicks the button, it should pop up a modal that allows the user to put the feedback uh, text and the feedback string and the submit button should hook it up to the API client to our backend API. And while you're working on this, if you look at the top right corner, you can see that the agents have different icons as notifications um, that tells you what agent's doing what. So in this case, if it's a purple circle, it means that the agent is thinking. If it's a square, then it needs your prompt or input to proceed. So you can easily track that um, either by clicking on the top right corner of the agent button or just in the tabs themselves, you'll see either a green check mark, a purple circle or yellow square. Okay, looks like the agent that was working on the backend APIs is done. Let me quickly look at the API endpoints and update them so they don't have a dash in them. As you can see, you can do this within warp. You don't need to open anything else. Let me also update the submit endpoint to remove the dash and save it. And we should be good to go. Meanwhile, the front end agent looks like that it's still doing some work, understanding styles and project structures and whatnot. So let me go back to the backend agent and ask it to deploy the project locally to Docker. This project has never been deployed to Docker. I use a completely different um, staging setup to test it out. So let's see how Warp does deploying it to Docker for the first time. Okay, so while the other agent is working on deploying it to Docker, looks like the front end agent is done. It's created what I've asked it for. If I quickly review it, it has edited the exact files I was expecting it to. It has matched the styles to my current theming. And let me quickly check if the API looks good. Yep, that looks good to me. So no edits required there. And the front end should be good to go. Now let's wait for the other agent to finish the Docker deployment. And while I'm waiting for that, I could easily fire up another agent and do something else, multitasking with multiple agents at the same time without ever leaving this space. And I hope that kind of gives you an idea about how Warp streamlines your development workflow by uh, allowing you to work with multiple agents, do multiple workflows all at the same time without ever switching contexts. And needless to say that it's pretty good at understanding even a complex project structure about the storage layers, web APIs, existing contracts, styling, and seamlessly add code changes as if you were doing it yourself. Okay, it's been a few minutes and looks like the Docker deployment is ready. It's giving me all the curl commands to test it out. That's good. So let me go ahead and build my front-end project and test it out to see if the feature actually works. So here's the project rebuilt. The button is there. It's even added a nice icon. The styling matches, the theme matches, models popped up. Uh, let me enter a feature title and give it a description and submit it and see how that works. Perfect. As you can see, I was able to make a pretty involved code change, build the projects, deploy them, and test them, all without ever switching contexts or tools. And that's the beauty of Warp. It's a unified developer workbench that brings together coding, AI agents, and terminal tools all in one place, allowing you to perform complex, multi-step, agentic tasks from building to testing to deployment. Not to mention, given its access, Warp has greater context awareness, and it scored higher than cloud code on coding benchmarks, ranking it number one on both Terminal Bench and SWE Bench, but have only just scratched the surface. There's so much more. 
like warp drive, code-based indexing and semantic search, project-based goals and rules, and MCP integrations, all of which I cannot demonstrate in a short YouTube video. So if you want to work faster and be more efficient in your coding workflow, consider giving warp a try and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you use the promo code UTSAV, you can get 70% off warp pro subscription. So instead of $18 a month, you'd only be paying $5.40. And if you're already using warp, I'd love to hear how you're using it in your workflow. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.